Tonight, it's a cripple news special. All about the disgraced streamer, Dr. Disrespect. The shame streamer finally broke his silence about the mysterious Twitch ban four years ago. He also gives more details about the risky messages he sent to a fan. Is Twitch to blame or is Doc a creepy predator? We are going to find that out and so much more. When all hope is gone and the truth is under attack, there's only one place to get the true news. Crippled News. With your host, Ricky Berwick. Hey, if you like Crippled News, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps. Now, on to the show. The disgraced streamer, Dr. Disrespect, made his much-anticipated return this past Friday. After taking two months off for admitting to inappropriately messaging a fan... It was a minor issue. During his break, he would leave cryptic messages on his ex account, teasing a return. Doc, having no self awareness, would post images ripe for mockery. The first image he posted was him playing chess with his opponent playing checkers, insinuating that he is outsmarting everyone. However, the internet pointed out that Doc was playing a game for adults and his opponent was playing a game for kids, highlighting the fact that he likes to play with kids. Not a laughing matter, not, not, not a laughing matter. You would think Doc would have learned from his mistake, but this past Thursday, he released a hype video teasing his return on Friday. The video featured dark, intense music with Doc driving a boat to a mysterious destination. It didn't take long for the internet to mock him, though. What's that boat? Oh, no! He's back! Get away! Don't come on this island! He's gonna touch me! He's gonna feel me! He's gonna disrespect me! No! September 6, 2024, Dr. Disrespect made his comeback in a stream he labeled The Truth. His stream started with a one hour waiting lobby to add anticipation. As fans were flocking in to show support, some even called out his former streaming friends for abandoning Doc, many calling them snakes. As the minutes rolled on, the stream almost hit 200,000 viewers before it even started. Once Doc went live, he played coy and avoided the elephant in the room, joking around and showing off his new green screen assets. Oh. Brand new state-of-the-art transport system inspired by Arnold Schwarzenegger and Running Man. I... It works pretty well. Once he sat down at the desk, many thought he would dive right into the controversy. Instead, he played Wordle. Jump on Wordle? God, man. On a day like this, why would I even... <laughs> why would I entertain the idea of playing Minimize Wordle? Minimize the chat. Elephant in the room, Doc. We're waiting. Oh my god. Oh god. It's the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst of the thing I've ever ever I've ever ever ever, 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 ever. Just relax, man. Doc was getting a wave of donations. Some ranging from five dollars to five hundred dollars. I could buy a ton of reasons with that. One fan even donated one thousand dollars. I could buy a lot of Reese's with that. I'm sure Doc's bank account was loving this due to the fact that YouTube demonetized his channel. Doc even thanked the fans and went into depth about what his future options are for streaming. It's good to be back to a certain degree, right? We got to figure out this monetization thing. So it's September 25th is, is basically when we can reapply for partnership on YouTube, you know? People ask, like, do, do I, now that you're not getting monetized, you're not going to be streaming ever again or you're on YouTube, are you? I, I'm, there's an opportunity to reapply, right? 
September 25th is the date. So in the meantime, we'll we'll do what we need to do. Shortly after, Doc finally decided to address the elephant in the room. He began stating that initially he was legally unable to discuss the Twitch ban. However, due to recent events, he is now allowed to speak about it. For almost four years, champs. The public demanded to hear from the doc regarding the Twitch suspension. I guess since you all missed the point with my personal statement, maybe it's time to tell my side of the story. Not huh, champs? You see, there was a lawsuit pending, and as part of that arbitration, all parties were not allowed to speak publicly about the case. <laughs> I respected those rules. My lawsuit against Twitch was eventually resolved, as you all know. But even then, as part of the settlement, all parties were still prohibited from speaking publicly about the case or the settlement. However, if one side violated that confidentiality, then the other side could respond. And again, champs, again, I respected all the confidential obligations. But apparently Twitch's own disgruntled employees didn't feel the need to abide by those same Obligations. He then took the time to call out Cody Connors. For those who don't know, Cody is an ex-Twitch employee and is the guy who exposed him for messaging a minor. Doc questioned the reason why Cody exposed him after years of staying silent. Probably because you're a creep. He also questioned if Cody knows the definition of sexting. Cody, why, why, you, why do this? What was the point? This was settled professionally. And you, knowing how black and white the internet is, you decided, you f***ing rat, to leak the reported reason Twitch banned me in 2020. Well, I mean, for what, Cody? Why? Did you not know the repercussions from spewing lies about the two-time? Did you not know the repercussions of accusing me, Cody Connors? You see, you don't know sh and it was obvious from your tweet. You didn't have any first-hand knowledge of my dispute with Twitch. You said that I got banned from Twitch because I was sexting a through Whisper's messages? <laughs> do you even know what the legal definition of sexting is? I do. And yeah, I used Twitch's Whispers, but trust me, I wasn't sexting anyone. When the doc made his initial response to the allegation, people noticed that he had edited the word minor out. And then he added it back in, insinuating that he did that on purpose, that he was trying to bait the media and the public. Sure there, buddy. Sure. You also said the word minor, Cody. I even made sure that word was emphasized in my statement. Edited, etc just to make sure these so-called journalists would pick up on it. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, did they ever, champs. We sure did, buddy. Man, way to trick the media and the public into thinking you're a predator for two months. You got us. <laughs> After this insane take, Doc went into the possibility that this person he was texting was of age. When you and all these so-called journalists, Cody fired off your tweets? Did any of you consider that the Twitch user may have been over the legal age of consent at the time of the messages? You didn't. Neither did any of these journalists and neither did Twitch at the time of the ban. You also tried to tell the world that I was trying to meet up with this user at TwitchCon, but you're wrong. Let's set the record straight. I never intended to meet this user ever. We never made plans to meet at TwitchCon or anywhere else. And in fact, we n never met in person ever. Hey, maybe this person was at the consenting age. That doesn't change the fact that she was probably half your goddamn age. And probably too young for prom, you greasy perv. Bet Doc thinks otherwise. He thinks that this was a coordinated attack and that internally Twitch did not find anything wrong with the messages. I suspect all of you sort of planned and coordinated this attack. 
They report on, on all this based on leaks from two former Twitch employees, one of whom was supposedly on the trust and safety team. If these anonymous sources worked on the trust and safety team at the time of my Twitch suspension in 2020, then you would hope they would tell the truth. But apparently that's just too much to ask. If these former trust and safety team members, and by the way, I know exactly who they are, <laughs> actually had firsthand knowledge, then what they conveniently left out is, one, Twitch's trust and safety team, the same employees that decided to ban me, internally admitted that the whisper messages were not sexting. And two, Twitch's trust and safety team, the same employees that decided to ban me, internally acknowledged that the whispers did not constitute child material CSAM. I'll say it again. Neither I nor the Twitch user exchanged any sexual graphic messages or images. Doc then claims that Cody and others are painting him out to be the next victim of Chris Hansen. He also claims that he made another 4D chess move in his tweet when he used the word inappropriate. Cody Connors and these other anonymous sources are trying to paint a picture that I was exchanging sexually explicit messages and photos with this Twitch user. That never happened. I even used the word inappropriate purposely. And look at how it was defined by everyone, champs. Huh? Including these defaming articles. Damn, dude, you got us again. Doc then highlighted the fact the user never came out to the public about the situation. That it was Twitch that had the issue. And this is not a situation where a victim publicly accuses someone of wrongdoing. That never happened here. We're talking about allegations that Twitch made against me as a half-baked reason for justifying their actions of suspending and shutting down my channel. Allegations that Twitch made without even a legal analysis of whether the whisper messages were legal. You see, I engage with my community. I engage with other streamers. And through Twitch whispers, I communicate with Twitch users. Conversations that consisted of a variety of playing games and gaming politics, content creation, random stuff. This was the extent of of my whispers with this Twitch user. Doc then puts on his tinfoil hat as he goes on to explain how his ex-Twitch partner conspired to get him banned since Doc fired him. On June 21st, 2020, my ex-Twitch partner manager learns that I exchanged whispers with the Twitch user. <laughs> and I say ex-partner manager because for years, this guy didn't do anything for me my community, or my channel. For years. It was never on my channel. He didn't follow me on Twitter. He, he wouldn't even inform us about Twitch rival tournaments. We're talking about the two-time. Twitch rival tournament. Oh, I'm sorry. I got, I, would you, would you want to play in it? <laughs> we got zero support from this guy. And it was just so obvious that he carried a grudge against the two-time. So after we signed with Twitch in 2019, we asked for a new partner manager. And just a few months later, that ex-Twitch partner manager is directly involved with getting me banned. <laughs> Coincidence? If all this is true, it would have been great if Doc provided some evidence of this. Scumbag Twitch employees are nothing new. However, this is just hearsay. Doc then explained how the alleged scumbag Twitch partner pressured the user into filing the complaint. Something she initially did not want to do. The Twitch user tells the ex-Twitch partner manager that they do not want to report anything to Twitch. I'll repeat that sentence one more time just in case anybody missed that one. The Twitch user tells this ex-Twitch partner manager that they do not want to report anything to Twitch. But this ex-Twitch partner manager encourages the user and even directs them to file a report directly with Twitch, even though the user told him clearly that we never physically met anywhere and that no photographs were exchanged. On June 24th, 2020, Twitch's special operations team receives and reviews the user's report. They find no issues and determine that it did not warrant any further escalation to Twitch's law enforcement response team. 
Doc then explains how the Twitch manager was not satisfied with the result of the first report and filed the second one onto a higher authority. <laughs> Talk about having a hard on for someone. That should have been the end. But that partner manager. Oh boy, oh boy, did he had it out. Yeah, he had it out for the two time. He finds out that no further action will be taken, so what does he do? He personally escalates the report to a friend on the Twitch's LER team. The LER team, remember, that's the Twitch's law enforcement response team. He escalates the report to a friend on Twitch's LER team. So a day later, on June 25th, the LER analyst pulls the entirety of the whisper messages and begins discussing them with his director of the LER team. Mind you, this director is on vacation at that time and does not have access to their computer or work files. L let me just remind you, I went through a multi-year, multi a, a big time arbitration, okay? And uh, you know, you discover a lot of stuff. Mind you, this director is on vacation at that time. The LER analyst cherry picks and sends a few targeted excerpts out of context from the whisper messages to this director. Within less than one hour, this LER analyst and his director have made the decision to suspend me from Twitch. Doc then explains how Twitch sent the report to NCMEC. Yet, these are the same people who internally admitted that the messages were not illegal? I don't know, folks. It's Twitch. Twitch submits a report to NCMEC. You guys all read those little articles, huh? The NCMEC. Twitch submits that report. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Guess what? As far as I know, and over four years have passed, they didn't do anything with the report. As far as I know, they didn't escalate Twitch's report to law enforcement. <laughs> Mind you, the same people that made this decision admit internally that the messages did not constitute sexting. The same people that made this decision at Twitch admit internally that the messages did not warrant any child's material charge. Twitch makes this decision to terminate my contract and ban me while admitted they did not perform any legal analysis of whether the messages exchanged were legal in any way. Twitch makes this decision to terminate my contract and ban me while admitting that they never investigated the age of consent in the jurisdiction where the user's messages were sent and received. Twitch makes this decision to terminate my contract and ban me without ever interviewing me, the user, or any other third party, including the partner manager. It's unbelievable! Doc then does his best impression of InfoWars and puts his tinfoil hat back on. As he dives into why he thinks Twitch went after him and ended his channel. The judge in the case determined that the whispers were not illegal. So then why did Twitch use these messages against me? I, I, why did Twi Twitch treat the doc so differently from their other streamers? The reality is they wanted to cut down the doc, plain and simple. Take a look at some of these horrendous acts of Twitch streamers that were never banned. I've got some examples right here. Example number one, a streamer that frequently used the N word while publicly streaming, which constitutes a violation of Twitch's policies if accompanied by hateful intent. Twitch scheduled a meeting with the streamer to ascertain his intent to determine whether his contact was a violation of Twitch's policies, ultimately determining it was not a breach of Twitch's policies. Why wasn't I called into a, from, into a meeting? Why wasn't my intent taken into consideration, champs? It's so obvious that certain Twitch executives, employees involved had personal biases against the doc and used all of this as an opportunity to terminate my contract. Go back and look at the timing of all this too. Huh. The doc's termination lines up with two preferable, profitable, and expensive streamers leaving Mixer. The two streamers he is talking about is Ninja and Shroud, both being massive Twitch streamers at the time, and both signed multi-million dollar contracts with the new platform, Mixer. However, this new platform failed, and Twitch's golden boys were looking for a new site. As soon as Twitch knew that Mixer had failed, and go look at the timing. 
these other expensive streamers needed a new streaming platform. So Twitch rushed through its decision to terminate the two time. This full grown man describes how the ban affected him and his video game studio, Midnight Society, blaming Cody Connors for the eventual layoff and not himself for being a horn dog. It has affected us on so many levels back in 2020 and now in 2024. And Cody Connors, I just have to say it again. Why would you do this? Like I said, this was handled professionally years ago. No f***ing wrongdoing. But because of you, Cody, we just lost... Ah, f man. Unfortunately, we have to lay off people from Midnight Society. Because of you, Cody. Doc explains why he is making this statement and who it's for. He sort of takes accountability... Like he kind of alludes that the user took his messages the wrong way. I don't know. You'll see. This was for my team today. My community, my friends, la familia that have supported me. And I'm not denying the exchange of whispers, champs. I'm not denying that to, to all of you out there. It looks bad. I have no way of knowing if the Twitch users thought our exchange of whispers, whispers was inappropriate. If it was, I apologize. All I, all I know is that I never did what Twitch, Cody Connors, or the public is claiming that I did. That's it. I'm not saying anything more about any of this, right? Unless I need to, because trust me, I have more I haven't disclosed. I just want to get back to what we do best. Put on a show. And climb our way to the tippity top of the mountain, man. Uh, soon after, Doc went back to regular streaming. He said a lot and pleaded his innocence, but there is one thing that would nip his problem in the bud. Luckily, one fan asked a golden question. Why not show the chat logs? People want to show the messages, release the messages, show the messages. What are we, in second grade? The internet seems split about Doc's return. Some were positive, like Keemstar, who claims Doc is innocent and Twitch has a lot of explaining to do. Others think it proves nothing new and that Doc is still a grubby perv. His former stream buddy, Nick Merckx, came out to call him a retard. Go to rickybrowick.com and get yourself a retard pass sticker. He also mentioned that Doc admitted to messaging a minor and how that's inexcusable. He also addressed the people who claimed that he was a bad friend for turning his back on Doc by calling them brain rot morons. Here at Cripple News, we are more on the side of Nick. Sure, what Doc did was technically legal, but that doesn't mean it's moral. It's obviously bad enough if Twitch terminated a multi-million dollar contract and Doc himself refuses to release the chat logs. If he is truly innocent, then those chat logs are his smoking gun. Why not show them and be done with this all? Probably because it doesn't look good for him. Yeah, he might not be a PDF, but he is still a greasy little perv. As for Twitch, it's been too long that they go under the radar in this situation. They are just as guilty in this. If Doc's allegations are true, they need to come out with a statement or release the chat logs to defend their actions. It just looks bad, man. They come across as a company who doesn't know how to handle potential predators. Plus, we don't need any more reasons to hate Twitch. F*** that site. That's it for this week's Crippled News. For more, make sure to subscribe to the channel and come back every Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern. We also want to thank the producers of Crippled News. If you want to support the channel, go to patreon.com slash Ricky Berwick.